Hi all, Lee Veris here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. <clears throat> Today I'm taking a break from AI. Uh, well, sort of. I'm looking at Lightroom's new Remove tool, which brings Photoshop's generative fill into Lightroom. So yeah, this uses AI, but inside of an app photographers use on a daily basis. I'll explore some use cases and look at where it works well and where it fails miserably. <laughs> okay, let's dig in. Okay, so here we are, uh, and we're in Lightroom, and uh, I've got a couple images here I'd like to work on. Let's, let's start with this one. Uh, so we go into the Develop module, and what we're looking for is the... Uh, not the lens blur here, but the remove tool. So this is this this little thing that looks like uh, the eraser at the end of a pencil little icon up here. If we click on that, uh, what we have now is this new generative AI. Um, that's a new mode of the uh, move tool or remove tool. Uh, so we just check that and you, you notice now we have early access, we call it early access. Um, so now we have we have a brush. We can change the size of the brush with a slider here. And let's just say I want to remove this guy because I want to really focus on uh, on you know Johnny A here playing uh, guitar, not this guy. And so I'm going to just draw around him, kind of. This is a sort of a familiar way of selecting here. And you get the idea. We just make sure we just in completely enclose him with this sort of brushed in selection. Now that it's there, I can go and I can I can refine the, the, uh, the selection by adding more to it or subtracting from it. Or in our case, I'll just hit apply. So we hit apply. And now Lightroom is busy generating a, a, a fill to match the surrounding area. And if we, I mean, this is actually pretty amazing here. If I, if I move in, you can kind of see that it's done a really great job of, of replacing um, that subject with a background that makes sense. So really kind of just invisibly removed him. And that's just outstanding, okay? Um, Here's another one. Let's let's take a look at this one. We go into the develop module again. The remove tool. Um, when I shot this was a pano, and there's this kind of weird little box of this crate of garbage right over here, and I want to take that out. So uh, again, I'm using the generative AI. I got that checked, and I'm just going to carefully um, surround everything that I want to remove. And probably want to remove this drop shadow too, because uh, it would be if, if that stayed there, it would be kind of odd looking. So make sure we uh, we remove that and just cover it all up, so we don't have any gaps in our selection here. And uh, we'll just go ahead and hit apply. And there you go. And uh, let's let's. This is a fairly high res image, but it's an infrared image. Um, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna zoom in. Let's go to 100% here, and we'll look at this area. Not bad. I mean, you really cannot tell where the where the edge of the selection is. It's it's just done such a such a great job of filling that in. Really fantastic. Okay, so so far so good, right? This is where it really works incredibly well, much better than the, you know, the the content aware or the, uh, you know, the healing brush or the the clone tool. Um, so where is it? get problematic okay so here here's here's a really more complicated image and um, 
This is one of a, a multi exposure from our trip to Tuscany. This is in Siena. And, and I, I just wanted to create this feeling of this crowd of people uh, inside the, the cathedral. And these kind of figures in the front here, they kind of, they've always bothered me. And I, you know, kind of would like to remove them. So let's see what generative fill does here. So I'm going to go to develop. I'll go to my little uh, remove tool. I've got that checked. And I'm going to just start one by one taking out the ones that I that I don't like. So I don't like this person there. I want to get rid of her. Let's go ahead and apply. Not bad, not bad. Even put that that figure back there. Let's try this. This one is sort of ghosty, and I'd like to kind of get rid of it. I'll go ahead and take out this person, this figure as well. Let's go ahead and apply. Okay, now, now let's zoom in. Let's go to 100%. And now we have a different problem. You see, you can kind of see the edges of things because it's not replicating the noise. Um, and this is showing up the, the, the basic problem with... Um, with the generative fill in Photoshop and in Lightroom, is that uh, it's low res. Uh, the resolution of any given area maxes at 1080 pixels. So um, we're using a lower res area to replace a higher res area. So, um, you know, it's kind of a, you can kind of see where the edge is because the resolution of this area is different than the surrounding area. So we have, and it's even worse in the larger area that we replace. So it's smoother and it doesn't have the same level of sharpness. So you gotta be, have, have to be careful. I could probably get away with this. I can maybe add some noise in here, go into Photoshop. Um, but it, it's, it's a bit of a struggle to do that sort of thing inside of Lightroom. And then, uh, so, so that's one of our main problems. And here's, here's another one. I'm going to look at this. This is such a classic thing that you, you'd want to do. Um, you'd want to remove this guy. Let's say in, in, in this company, he quit. And so now for the group shot, they don't want to include him. So let's try and remove him. So we'll get our remove tool. Um, I'm going to outline him here. And ideally, what I want to have happen is just have him disappear so that there's nobody there. And I'm not going to bother with the shadow, it's just like too much. We're already probably, uh, you know, too high a res of an area to, to replace. But let's let's see what happens. Okay, <laughs> so we've replaced him. I guess Lightroom decided that this shadow, there has to be something there to make that shadow. So they put something in there. Um, you'll notice in this area here, where it says variations, one of three. So this is how Lightroom handles that. In Photoshop, you kind of see that in the little dialog box. You see all three variations. So here we have to kind of move through these arrows. So I'm going to Click on the next one, and there's another weird thing that it's stuck in there. And let's click on one more, and there's a very bizarre cylinder, or it looks like almost like a, a screen <laughs> set up on its side. Who knows why the AI decided to put that in there. So let's, let's try this again. I'm going to hit the refresh and, and come up with three more variations.
Okay, uh, another random thing stuck in there, which is really ugly, but uh, now we got another strange kind of quasi piece of furniture. We might be able to get, get by with that. Here's another strange, you know, <laughs> strange item. So, so I, I'm, I can refresh this one more time, but um, sometimes you'll get into this situation where you just can't make Lightroom do it. You can't make Lightroom do something. I, I mean, I could probably get away with that, but just it's it's weird. It looks like the bottom of a folding table somehow. Strange. Let's see what else is in there. Oh, well, now we have a person. But uh, let's take a look at this person. Yeah, yeah, not, not exactly usable. <laughs> Not exactly usable. And what's with the feet, too? You know, it's like very strange. Let's see. We have one more variation in there. And there's another weird kind of door. <clears throat> okay. Well, in this case, it, the, the only thing you can do is go into Photoshop. Because Photoshop will give you that little text field uh, for your generative fill. And you can explain what it is you want to replace that person with. Uh, in, in Lightroom, you just can't really do that. So, you know, there's no place to, to put um, text prompt for the filled in area. You just have to let Lightroom handle it. So sometimes it works and sometimes it fails miserably. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the show. Hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own creative exploration and maybe some motivation to try out Lightroom's new remove tool. Try it for yourself. See if you can make it work. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.